Scripture this morning is found in Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. Title this morning's message is a special invitation. A very special invitation. God bless you. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready, come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it, and went, and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged, he sent his troop, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed the man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Lord, I ask in your name, help us to receive the good news from this scripture. Help us to be open to what you are saying to us today. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Dr. Cope, my New Testament professor, would say that Jesus would tell common stories of his time, but then he put a twist on it. For example, in the parable, when someone asked him, who is my neighbor? In the story, the hero is a Samaritan. That was a major twist because the Samaritans were not held in very high regard by the Jewish people. In today's story, there's a twist here. There's a serious twist. But first, let's just learn a couple things about weddings in Jesus' time. Parents of the betrothed generally drew up the marriage contract. The bride and groom would meet, perhaps for the first time. That's interesting, when the contract was signed. The couple was considered married at this point, but they would separate until the actual time of the ceremony. The bride would remain with her parents, and the groom would leave to prepare their home. This could take quite some time, quite a while. When the home was all ready, the groom would return to his bride Without notice, the marriage ceremony would then take place, and the wedding reception, the wedding banquet, would follow. The wedding banquet was one of the most joyous occasions in Jewish life and could last for up to a week. Quite a wedding reception. Jesus compares heaven to a wedding banquet that a king had prepared for his son. Now many people had been invited, but when the time came for the banquet and the table was set, the invited refused to come. In fact, the king's servants who brought the joyful message were mistreated and even killed. The king, enraged at the response of those who had been invited, sent his army to avenge the death of his servants. He then sent invitations to anyone. The scripture is clear about that. Good and bad. He went out to the main streets. He just wanted his halls filled. Wanted his hall filled. He went out. Good and bad. Anybody and everybody just went right to the marketplace. You know, everybody would come. 
And I think we all like this. That's the nature of the kingdom of God. That everybody's invited. You're welcome. Come. Accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Come into the, come into the party. Here's the twist. During the feast, the king notices a man who is not wearing a wedding robe. When asked how he came to be there without the furnished attire, the man had no answer and is promptly ejected from the feast outside into the outer darkness where there will be, will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. For many are invited, but few actually get the program, is, what, is what's being said. <clears throat> this is a very special invitation. There's three parts to it. There's God the inviter. There's the invitation itself. And then there are the invitees and how this plays out. God the inviter. God is an inviting God. Come to the waters, come home, come to the bank, come to an abundant life, come to eternal life, come to worship, come to God Himself. It's a very gracious invitation. The invitation itself, the invitation that God gives us is the service. Go, Matthew 28 says. Invitation to abundant life. I've come that you may have life and have it abundantly. To worship. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all your land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. An invitation to eternal life. God so loved the world. He gave His one and only Son, so that whosoever believes on Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. To enjoy the presence of Jesus. To experience rest. To pray. To turn to God in a time of need. Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and searchable things which you have not known. Have you ever been at a party that was so good, so fun, so cool, that you just can't even believe that you're invited to it? And you just look at whoever you're with and say, isn't, it, isn't this great? Maybe they don't even say it. You just kind of you, know, you look at your wife, you look at your husband, or or your friend, and you say, man, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad we're here. And that's, that's what the, the kingdom of God, I believe, is like, should be like, and is like. Now we're to the invitees, those who were invited. First invitees, not that they could not come, it's that they would not come. But the hall gets filled. Nothing matters about the past. It's the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Good, no one is too good that they don't need. And this represents heaven. So no one's too good that they don't need salvation. No one is too bad that they're beyond the pale of God's love. But this guy doesn't have a wedding robe on. And it causes a problem. Now I want to say, this is about a lot more than dress code. This teaching in the Bible is a lot more than dress code. In fact, I'll tell you a dress code story. Uh, uh, an HR person, a human resources person, she was in charge of dress code in her company. She was on an elevator, and she looked at this guy on the elevator. It's a little casual today, aren't we? And he says, well, that's one of the benefits of owning the company. <laughs> Guy is not wearing a wedding room. Now, what does this mean? What does this mean for us today? Scholars tell us that in Jesus' time, it was a custom for the host to provide free garments for all the guests. So there was no excuse for this guy to be not in the robe that was provided for coming in, uh, for coming in to the party. Indeed, it would be a gross insult to the king to refuse to wear the garment provided to the guests. Has there ever been a problem with, to teach a greater story, has there ever been a problem with clothing in the Bible? 
from the very start. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. They sinned. What's the first thing they did? We need a couple of fig leaves. God said, God bless you. God said, you need a whole lot more than those fig leaves. And God went and he killed animals. He had to sacrifice animals. And he placed them on Adam and Eve. And God covered them up appropriately. In the book of Revelation, we see those in heaven wearing white robes. Revelation 7, 9. And we learn that the whiteness of their robes is due to their being, there's one thing that's happened to those robes. They're being, they've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Wow. Isaiah 64, 6 tells us that covering ourselves our own way is like a filthy cloth. So, so there's a, a choice here. When we come into the wedding of our Lord, there's a new expectation. I read this long quote at the uh, 8 o'clock service, and uh, I'm not going to read it here. Um, because I, uh, I'm, from reading this sh super long quote, I realized that maybe it's not a good idea. <laughs> They're my, uh, it's my uh, lab, it's my lab early in the morning at 8 o'clock. Um, God loves us just as we are. But he loves us so much, he doesn't want us to stay that way. And the road that Jesus Christ, uh, the road that is offered to this man that he doesn't put on is symbolic. It's a symbol of us for the, the blessing that God wants to give us. Uh, to, to put on uh, certain things when we come in to the kingdom of God. You and I come to the kingdom. You and I come to the wedding party uh, to be changed. Initially, we can say it's come as you are, but it's come and be changed into something a whole lot better. Yesterday, just blew my mind, in our daily bread, title of it was The Power to Change. And the theme was this. God takes us as we are, but never leaves us that way. Too many words for the sign. Too many words for the sign, but I wanted that. God takes us as we are, but never leaves us that way. There's so much more than the initial yes to Jesus. There's so much more than that decision that initial yes, when we say to the Lord, yes, I accept you as my Savior and Lord. There's, there's something that we're to take hold of, and even more so, something that is to take hold of us. Romans 13, 14. Clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Galatians 3.37 For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. Isaiah 61 He has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He covered me with the robe of righteousness. And I, I preached on this back in 2008. The title of my message was Total Makeover. Where I feel, and I went and I looked at some of the classic uh, interpretations of this parable about, about what it means. And Martin Luther, uh, famous guy of the Reformation, said that uh, this robe thing is about faith. That when we say to Jesus, uh, you know, I'm, I'm giving up my record, okay, I'm asking your forgiveness of my sins. And I want you to cover me with everything about you that is, is good. And again yesterday, in the upper room devotion, as God's chosen people, robe yourself, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. If anyone has 
complain against another. Forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. You know, today I'd love to provide a robe for everyone to put on today. I'd love to do that. But what size would it fit? Would it be right for you right now? And you know something? I, I, I couldn't figure that out. But I don't have to. Because God has already provided it for each of us. And the word from the Lord for each of us this day is to put it on is to put it on what Jesus has for you, to put it on in faith. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you. And we thank you for your loving kindness to each of us. We thank you that you've invited us to the kingdom of God. And now, Lord, help us to to know what that truly means in each of our lives. To be a part of the kingdom of God. We pray this in your name. We need you, Lord. Help each of us to know you as our Savior and Lord. And help each of us to, uh, in faith, to be surrounded by the plan that you have for each of our lives. In this parable, it's called a road. We love you, Lord. Bless us that we may be a blessing in your kingdom. We pray this in your name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.